This live martial arts class, we're talking self-defense, specifically street fight self-defense with your walking cane. And the number one reason, I'm going to show you this right from the start. The number one reason that I like this weapon is because of reach, because of speed and power, the ability to hit hard, and because you can carry it with you anywhere and everywhere you go. This is a walking cane or a walking stick with this crook on it. You can carry this anywhere you go. Combat cane, uh, cane foo, martial arts cane, whatever you want to call it. It's all pretty much the same. As long as it has this hook here and it has this shaft here and it's made out of a durable material. This one is made out of rattan. This is the starting training cane. It's still able to deliver a lot of force a lot of speed, a lot of power. It's a jabbing weapon. It's a slicing or striking weapon. You can turn it around, use this hook. Here it's coming straight in, coming across. You can reach this into that upper back, into the face. You can rake it across their face, all for self-defense. And for street fight self-defense, because you have this reach, you can keep your opponent, you can keep your attacker, the stronger opponent, multiple attackers, or the attacker with a knife. Knife attacks, this is very extremely dangerous at range. That means if they're close enough to stick this in you over and over and over again, you're in big, big trouble. No matter how you're defending or fighting with your hands, your hands, your skin, all that bleeds. And this is a sharp blade. This will cut me very quickly, very easily. This will cut you in self-defense. You don't wanna to try to take this away. If you know how to do some of those moves, that's better than nothing but you're still probably gonna get cut, even if you're really experienced. If you ask any knife fighter, anybody who knows how to defend effectively against a knife with their bare hands, they're gonna tell you, expect to get cut, expect to get stabbed. And that, there's, that's the worst thing possible. This is almost worse in many cases than a, a bullet because it lacerates, it gets in there, it cuts things in ways that the doctors don't see our, uh, in time sometimes and have a hard time fixing. So if you can defend against a knife attack with something that has superior length, you're already in a much better position. So we're gonna throw that out of there. We're talking about how to train with your walking cane for self-defense. Street fight self-defense with a walking cane or martial arts cane or combat cane, tactical cane, whatever it is, whatever the, they're all the same cane, they just have different names, right? And they almost always have a similar material this one's rattan, which is a practice cane. These are also called a dojo cane because you can use this in practice and training and you don't have to do it in a dojo. You don't have to be a martial artist to defend yourself with a cane. I put a link below. If you're interested in getting this one, it's very inexpensive. I've had this over a year. I've smashed it against every surface in this building and it hasn't broken. So it's a very good starting option and it's very lightweight. When you start with this motion here, you're starting to develop those calluses on your hands, proprioception, you're getting your heart rate up, improving your posture, and it's a simple spin. It's not a self-defense move, it's a conditioning move for self-defense. You're gonna bring it over and back. And think of this motion as slapping against, right against the face, that's a very effective self-defense tool, or a backhand slap against the face. So you're just coming in and back, in and back, and that creates that infinity sign or a sideways figure eight. You're gonna to start to speed this up. And the great thing about this move, this warm up move, again, not self defense, this is conditioning the body for self defense. But the great thing about this is that it forces your stomach up and in, it forces your heart rate up a little bit, so you're gonna to start to break a light sweat and start to get healthier, leaner, stronger better cardiovascular fitness, but also learning spacing, distance, and time. Distance and timing is the key to all self-defense. Being able, you don't have to be faster. You don't have to go, it's good to see you too. You don't have to be faster, you don't have to be stronger. You don't have to have better techniques even. You just have to have better timing and distance to get out of the way just enough to be able to strike and effectively defend yourself. You can also do this motion, this warm-up motion, sitting in a chair. So if you're not ambulatory with your legs, you're not able to walk around, or you use your cane to walk, and it's hard to stand and do this motion, do it from a seat, you can do it from sitting. All the moves that you see that I do in this workout today for you can be done standing or sitting, which means 
Maybe you're not in a wheelchair, but maybe you're sitting on a park bench. Maybe you're sitting waiting for the bus or waiting for the subway or you're on the subway, you're on the bus, you're in the airplane and you're sitting there and you have your cane. You now have a lot of options for self-defense, which again is why street fight self-defense with a walking cane is probably one of the best things that you can learn. Put it in the other hand, the long side comes out of the thumb, palm is facing the sky, your hand is closed but not squeezing so that it can move around and it's just that cranking motion just pushing forward pulling back stomach up and in 30 seconds here and then start to go over and back increasing your speed slow smooth smooth as fast as long as you're moving you're doing it right start to bring that in a little bit quicker feel your heat rising just whack my elbow a bunch already but that's good that's good feedback i call that immediate feedback that means something i'm doing is off that just pay, makes me pay attention better. Weapons, martial arts weapons have always been my favorite tool for increasing focus. If you start hitting yourself a lot, a lot, then you pay attention a lot faster. All right, now that's one kind of spin. I wanna show you the other thing that I want you to do with the spinning because it's gonna build strength in your grip, flexibility and mobility and endurance. You need flexibility to defend yourself, to fight, you need some mobility, the ability to move around without falling down, kind of like agility, but we're not moving as fast. So mobility, but you also need strength. This is a strengthener and you need endurance. This is why I call it like boxing or jumping rope for boxers, because this, again, I'm not advocating, I'm not saying you can't, I'm not gonna give you that opinion, but what I'm gonna say is I don't use this for self-defense. I use this for wrist, strength, wrist flexibility, elbow health, proprioception, mental training. This is that figure eight, and it's similar to the first one you did. You just put your hand up on the shaft a little bit, and you come in more like a strike. I also like this for you because it's disguising repetition. I want you to practice technique, technique, technique. You're gonna use principles for self-defense. Principles are situational awareness. Find their target, what target are you going to strike to remove or destroy, and then the technique comes after that. So technique is secondary, primary, number one is always going to be the principles of self-defense. And that means practice a lot, so you have a lot of techniques to choose from. So you're using this, thank you very much, you're using this, turning, turning. You can see I'm getting more flexibility, more strength. I'll show you that in just a second. There are two, two things I'm going to show you about how to stop them if they have their hands on your neck. Is that what you're saying? So you're turning, turning, and then increasing the speed, and that's disguising strikes. So now you're practicing strikes, and you're getting a strong wrist. When you do this, and I want you to always practice full speed, full power. Once you warm up, once you get the move down, you have to practice for self-defense full speed, full power, so that you get all of that torque, all of that force going into your hand and your joint. You're gonna feel this thing wants to fly out of your hand, especially when you now go into a self-defense self situation where you're defending yourself, you're gonna feel all that force coming back into here as you make impact. And you don't want the first time that that happens is when you are really using it for self-defense for real. So always practice full speed, full power, and that's, uh, that's the fourth principle anyway. Self-defense principle number one, pay attention to what's happening around you right now. Be present in the moment. Situational awareness, that's one. Number two, get in a better position. Put the cane between you and the person who's attacking you. If it's a knife attack, if it's multiple attackers, if it's a bigger opponent, it's always the same basic principle. Pay attention, see it coming before it gets there. Regardless of whether you can do that or not, get in a better position. Put this between me and the threat. They do. I, it's my favorite self-defense weapon of all time, but bar none. There's the threat. And then see why I like it so much? He has that knife, and we started with the knife. I showed you my little um, spring-loaded knife. It pops out. But it comes up to it. It's about this long. I don't want him to close the distance. And I'm going to be in this position. This is also why I'm not doing this. If he knows timing and distance, and I know uh, this is... 
This is highly debatable by caners everywhere. Caners worldwide are always debating, does this work or should it be one, should it be like this? Pers my personality. I'm not saying the other guy's wrong because I have no idea. I could be a thousand percent wrong. I'm not going to say anybody else is wrong. Here's my mantra in martial arts, and I want you to adopt this if you want to, right? If it's important to you. It's not good. It's not bad. It's different. My way is not good. Your way is not bad. Well, they're just different. Learn how to be open to all ways. That's that flexibility. So from here, this is my choice, my position. I like to be here waiting. I have this distance. I'll stick it right between your face, right between your eyes, right? I want to interrupt your uh, sight picture. I want to interrupt your line of sight if I can. Whether I'm holding it this way, which is a very good way to hold it, or if I'm holding it this way, which is also a very good way to hold it. Is one better than the other? No, they're just different, right? You could be in this position. Let me see if I can get this more in frame. And hold on, I'm going to drop you just a little bit. And while we're at it, let me grab that knife. This is what I was talking about, right? You have this, that's his hand. You can see how far, you get out of the way so you can see how far that's sticking out, right? Here's the, here's the difference. I know, oh, oversimplification, super obvious, right? But this is why you're, you have a sharp enough knife and somebody who really knows what they're doing, whether they're fighting, uh, this way, which is you know called hammer style, because this is the way you'd hammer something, or ice pick or screwdriver uh, grip. So it's, they're either going to hold it this way if they know what they're doing, if they're fighting this way, or they're going to hold it this way. They're coming in this way, or you're not even going to see it. It's going to be in this way, and it's going to come in. I always have to remember to pull that back in. It's a, it's a it's a cheap little goofy thing I've had since I was a kid, but boom, yeah, it's still sharp, and it'll still cut me very easily and I'll bleed, and I can do real damage. I've cut myself so many times over the years playing as a kid with knives. Don't play with knives, that's a bad idea. But this, no matter how hard I do that, that's not bleeding, right? We can, get, we can, we can come back in two minutes, three minutes, and look, and you're not gonna see, you'll see the little, you know, and I can buff those out, I'll sand those down, but there's no blood there. So if you have the choice, and it's your hand, against his knife, yes, you can, if you know what you're doing, defend yourself, and if you're lucky, if you know what you're doing and you're lucky, and you see it, you didn't, he, he wasn't hiding it, and then you didn't see it until it was too late. But if you have this, and you know that person's a threat, straight down on top of the head, right? Right through the eyes, hitting the temple, hitting the head, knocking them out, turning off their computer, their operating system, into the neck, smashing those nerves, uh, just like a choke out motion, giving them some temporary time on the ground. Into the arm, maybe it's the hand itself. The hand's coming in, smashing that hand. There's so many effective things you can do in this position or in this position. Right from here, I'm not sure, but then I see that knife come out, I can increase my length, my distance very quickly. And then this is like a big hammer. Because the weight's here, the weight's, it's almost like a suspended weight. Now I'm hitting even a lot harder. Let me show you my favorite cane. My favorite cane to train with, and this is oak. It's got that nice little tooth there. And it's not sharp enough to, to break the skin, but it certainly is pointy enough to get into all those nerves or into his face and rake or smashing against that arm, turn it around this way. You can hear the difference in the way that it sounds when it hits, right? It's hitting a lot harder. It's now, because it's oak and it's heavier, it's a denser wood, it's now shattering bones. That hand that's carrying the knife, that's trying to stick it in you, you're now just breaking, the hand's wrapping around. I've seen it. When I was in the Marine Corps, this guy was swinging his rifle in this big, big fight. We were out at 29 Palms. Uh, the guys were getting ready to deploy to the first desert storm, the first Gulf War, which wasn't really much, except for those guys who were injured there. I'm not trying to take it back. But compared to the last, last couple, the you know, last 19 years or 20 years, right? But this guy is holding his rifle here, swing it, was swinging it. He said swing it. He, sw he swung it like a baseball bat. And the other guy instinctively blocked like this. And I saw 
his arm go whoop, and his hand touch his elbow because it just shattered through those two bones. That's the same thing when the guy takes that knife out and you're in this protected position and you said back up, don't get any closer. And as soon as you realize he took out a knife, that your life is in, in imminent danger, you don't wait for him to lunge. You don't wait for him to make the first move with the knife. The knife is enough. As soon as you see that knife, you're full force. You're 100% committed. You're going in immediate, direct, and explosive for self-defense. From here in this position, if you happen to have it the other way, and I know I lowered it, but I think we need a little bit lower. There it is. When did you see that? That's the private parts, right? That's the guy's legs. You're here. He catches you off guard. That knife, bring that straight up right into the groin, bring it back, and then up and through the head, through the face, through the arms, breaking the ribs for self-defense. It's extremely effective. It's extremely powerful. And that's holding it in this position. You can also, if you need to, get in a more protected position with it like this. From here, I can go straight in, creating distance. I can hook the head, hook the body. And I still have distance. If he's got that knife, I can slide it back and bring it through this way. Take it in the other hand like a bayonet attack, right, on a rifle. If I'm on the other side, it's the same thing. We have this distance. I can now pull cue strike, creating that distance, pushing. That happens either side. And they're all legitimate techniques. They're all legitimate strikes. Again, are they good or bad compared to something else? Simply different. And when we talk about street fight self-defense with a walking cane, we talk specifically about using, just, I just like seeing black. I, I'm not gonna get century, it's a great product. Um, I just, I, I like this idea of principles over, and it's not just me, it's not just my idea of principles over techniques. There's a saying in law enforcement and the highest levels of military that techniques get you killed Strat or strategies or it starts with tact tactics get you killed strategies save your life and the same is true it just switch out those words when we talk self-defense techniques get you hurt killed injured and principles will save you and the idea is behind that is let's say all you ever did was jabbing and that has to be your technique and then you come up to a guy who's a really great guard and you can't break through the jab you're going to need a hook and, but, but in your school, they said, don't ever hook because that's the guys down the street and hooking's wrong. And master so-and-so said, don't. And, you, and if you've ever been in martial arts, you've heard that. If you've ever been in a traditional martial arts school, you've heard those silliness, that silliness, that ridiculousness, this idea that there's only one way to do it. No, there's every way. Even the most goofy techniques don't look like they would work. There's some situation where that might be the best technique because the question becomes, after you do situational awareness, number one, always pay attention. But no, that means get off your phone, right? Stick your phone in your pocket when you walk out the door. And that's not a, st the world is uh, different. I call this, uh, and it's right now, and it's not the whole world's going bad. The world's mostly good. People are most, most people are good. Most people are honest. Most people are honorable. This is a wonderful world that we live in. These are wonderful countries that most of us live in. But times are a little bit crazier. Everybody knows it. I don't have to explain it for a lot of reasons. But this is like a life insurance policy or an auto insurance policy, car insurance policy, especially if you live in South Florida or anywhere else. Car insurance policy, stick that in your car, you drive to the gas station, get out in a shady area, you just pull that out while you're pumping your gas, right? And you stand with it like this, hook facing out, you're pumping your gas, the guy comes up, toof, <laughs> that's the one, right? Right up there, through there. Hey, buddy, you know, you're getting too close. Can I help you? You know, and then, or wherever it is. And that's just, that's an extra level of security. That's you becoming your own first responder. You making a tactical decision to carry something and then learning strategy. What are the strategies that you're going to use? And it's always going to change. This is my point. Principle of self-defense, number three. Well, let's talk about number two. Better position, right? Because I want you to know how to use this from the first day you get it. From here, this is one way to carry it. Hook facing out. We talked about just straight up the middle. Then practice that. Once you get your cane, or if you have your cane, get the other hand up, practice. Just hard and fast right up the middle. And then that second strike is that angular strike. Think of coming up 
and through. The third strike is coming back the other way. You go through them, bring it back, and then number four, pushing in, all from this position. That's uh, number one. Then, same thing, get it up in this position. So this is, you're caught off guard. You have to go fast immediately. This is number two, better position. Better position number one, as opposed to that. Better position number two for this and that. Better position number three, because the principle is getting a better position. They have a knife, you wanna create distance. You're gonna step in and, thank you. It's my, my uh, good, good question. It, it, it doesn't really. Again, not good, not bad, different. I wanted to show you what you could do. I'm gonna tell you why this is beneficial. I'm gonna tell you why the other is beneficial. In this position, horn facing out, you now have uh, the crook or the hook facing out. You ha this is ergonomically more appropriate. This is ergonomically stronger for you. You're in a better standing position like this, as opposed to this. You'll, you'll just try it and you'll feel immediately what I'm talking about. Number two is that immediate ability. If you get caught off guard, you go right into that attack or that attack. Now, if you're in this position, I like this. You see it coming. You did situation awareness. You, you saw them crossing the street. You weren't sure, but you just, you know, hey, guys, how's it going? As you're walking by, your hands are up. It's good to see you guys tonight. You're smiling. And, but if you have to immediately, your cane is between you and the threat. And you have this length. I like it for the length. Not good, not bad, different. This way, one option, and then you can get into this position. Now the hook is still facing out. This is that first position. From this, this is a third way to think of putting the cane between you and the threat. So when I say uh, principles of self-defense, I'm talking always situation awareness. Number two, always get in a better position. Create distance between the threat, this is the threat, and yourself by either stepping back or you can step in if you feel more confident. And you're going to put the cane, the stick that doesn't... Um, Yes, both ways is right. You can practice, uh, or you, you put the, the, the hard wood, right, between you and the threat. Like I said before, and I showed with the knife, the wood doesn't bleed. So, and your skin does. So from here, you either step in or you step back. Now, pulling it up in this position, this is also one of my favorite ways to defend myself because number three, we'll talk about if they grab the cane because I don't mind if he grabs my cane. If he grabs my cane down here, and I'm up here, I know how to handle that. You're gonna know how to handle that too, and you're not gonna worry so much if he grabs it now. If he grabs the cane here, instead of jerking back and forth, let him, as he pulls, let him have it, literally, go with it, because now the advantage becomes yours, and push your backhand over and down into his head or his face, and if the hook is out, that's even better. But this idea that he, he's gonna grab here and he's, and he, this, is, this is one way they can grab. Now you've got the tug of war going Let, and he's pulling. As he pulls, you time it, you go in and then just bring that back up straight down and practice this, you'll see exactly what I mean. This is an extremely hard, strong, smashing blow to probably end the street fight very quickly for self-defense. So that's, he grabs it, that's good. I now know where his hands are. And a lot of martial arts will tell you that. Second way, if you have it here and he grabs it here or outside your hand or one hand inside, outside, and again, the tug of war is happening like this and you time it. And as he takes it, turn, and then it's down. Or turn the other way and it's down. And because his energy is pulling, his energy is not trying to stop this. You're gonna let him have it. And as that happens, one hand up, one hand down, which hand doesn't matter up and then this pushing straight down. And these are the muscles that you use to get up and out of your uh, easy chair when you're watching television on Sunday. These are the muscles that push you up so you're very strong in this position. He's bringing it up, down, then jabbing with it. Bring the other hand over the top. So many things. And, and I almost forgot this guy, he said your hands are on your throat, right? Or he's grabbing you here. Yeah, and it won't be. Even if you're not super fast, you start, you weren't fast enough, then go again. But don't give up. The fight's not over until you win. 
The guy's got his hands on your neck. Your cane is up here. You bring the cane down between you and his face. You just pull his teeth out as you come down. And then you have a choice. You can go into his throat. He can't stop that attack. I don't care how much muscle he's got there. He's got that cartilage that if it breaks, if it collapses, he's dead. They can't get to him in time. For self-defense, that's what we're talking, right? So you have that. You can go right through his face. <laughs> he's not going to block with his head. He's going to respond. You control the head, you control the fight. From here, you can bring it down. Maybe it's on top of his arms. And then you just pull this. This is a very, another way you're very strong, pulling yourself up. Pull this into your body. So his hands are here on your neck. That pulls him down here. And then once you pull it down, right in, boom, boom. You're very strong in both of those positions because it's the way, good. It's the way your body moves. Your body can move very strongly. That's your core muscles. No matter how strong his arms are, they're not going to be, yeah, easily the fist. His arms will never be as big as your core muscles, your ability to turn. That's what martial arts is. Martial arts, especially martial arts, Kane, Kane Fu, World Kane Masters. Um, this is a uh, Kane Masters International Kane, one of my favorites. But the, all these different styles are the same. Hapkido Kane, Kung Fu Kane, whatever it is, the principles are all the same coming from martial arts, which is you don't have to be stronger. You don't have to be faster. You just have to know a little bit different way to think about things. These principles of self-defense. Better position is number two. Put the cane between you and the threat. Now you've increased distance. And then practicality. That, that's my basic principle. I don't, I will, I'll teach you all of the cool joint locks, pressure points, come along techniques. All the fun things that I learned with cane 20 years ago when we thought, you know, you get in a cane, you get in a fight with a cane, you're going to take it and you're going to put it behind his neck, pull him in, you're going to go behind him, twist him, squeeze him down, do that. And all that stuff works. It all works. Just like Hapkido works, just like the old style jujitsu, Japanese jujitsu, not the BJJ, because BJJ is more based on like what really works in a fight. The old style is more, you know, coming from the samurai days. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's just different. All of it works. Aikido works. Aikido works as long as the guy is feeding you correctly and you know you see me laughing and I'm not cracking on Aikido because they're all of the martial arts traditional martial arts are the same as soon as you break out of Wing Chun one of my favorites Hubad Lubad um, where you're blocking and you're doing that that stuff works so well Kali the scream of knife fighting and the guy comes in if you ever watch the Jason Bourne movies or Liam Neeson when he's in the movie Taken or or uh, Benicio Del Toro's fighting the and all that stuff um Thank you, thank you for that comment, thanks for that feedback. All of those things that they're doing all work, but you have to, it's almost a controlled environment. It's like, you know, MMA cage fighting is great as long as you're in the cage, but a lot of law enforcement and a lot of uh, uh, special forces types of operators have moved away from just doing that exclusively because you don't wanna be wrestling around on the ground with the one guy when the other guy runs up and kicks you in the head or smashes you with a two by four or a piece of concrete and then it's over. All your, you can be a BJJ black belt, and then you're in trouble. And that's not to crack on any style of martial arts, but that's to say principles over techniques. Principles of self-defense are different than fighting anyway. Principles of self-defense are not the same as MMA, as UFC. UFC, it's very well controlled. There's no control. There's no, no, there's no variable that you, could, you couldn't pre ever prepare for every single variable in a fight. But you can be in a better position you can think of immediate direct explosive. The knife comes out, you're straight in, right? From here, you go in, you go in, you reach in and, and grab, but that comes to the third question, which is what are your, what are your uh, targets? What are you gonna remove or destroy? Temporarily, their eyesight, their ability to breathe through their nose or their mouth, when you shove that straight in, you go straight in, or permanently through their throat, crushing that, and then they asphyxiate before for self-defense. So those are all, or maybe it's, maybe it's that hand with a knife and you just shattered that bone or you had to come straight in or before he gets the knife to you, you come in and, and knock him out and his ability to be awake, right? And the cops scoop him up and take him off for self-defense or it's the leg smashing through the leg, the, uh, the knee, the ankle for self-defense. 
but your targets are going to change constantly depending on the scenario. That's why we talk about techniques of uh, self-defense are all good. There's no wrong technique. But where's the, what's the principle? When do you use the technique? It's always going to be, it's fluid. That's why it's important to practice flow. So I'm going to show you the flow drill. From here, the first flow drill with the hook facing out is going to be that up, back, over. It's a two-move drill. Just practice. Another way to think of it is combinations, right? One, striking combinations with a self-defense cane or striking combinations with a martial arts cane so that your, uh, so that your cane becomes uh, your car insurance policy here in South Florida or wherever you live so that when you get out of the car, whatever technique you have to use, you're prepared. So up through the middle. And like I said at the beginning, you warm up, you get a feel for it, but then you've got to move fast. And move fast and put stress on your hand, all that leverage against your hand so that you don't lose it and practice so that you don't lose it when you're defending yourself. It's such an effective self-defense tool that you need to keep it in your hand. So that's the first flow drill. The second drill in the same position is step in, strike straight in, strike at this angle. Think into the ribs, think into the face, or you can come in more with a hook if you need to, Number, and then bring it back. And the third one is up and across. And the last one, support with the other hand in that alternating grip, and come in, bayonet strike. So flow drill number two, one, oh wait a minute, you come up here, we're in this position, step in, or step back as long as the stick between you and the knife. From here, straight in into the solar plexus, into the face. One, two. And I said this the last time we worked on this. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to be the world's strongest person on that jabbing motion that comes right into the face because the hard wood is doing the work. The hard wood is smashing the nose, breaking the teeth down the throat, going into the eyes. That's enough. One, bring it back. Two, coming through. Hitting now the temple, hitting the side of the face, the cheek, that orbital bone shatters for self-defense. Breaking the jaw or hitting that mandibular or that ear, boxing the ears in for self-defense. You can bring it back across then the other way. So practice like this. Better position, one, two, and then when you bring it back, you can imagine scraping across the face, that big hook, and then three, and then support it, step in, and four. And then... Yeah, that's why, that's the whole point. You just made the point, right? That's why techniques are not as important as um, principles. If you can't get the other hand on the cane, you can't get the other hand on the cane. It's as simple as that. But sometimes you will be able to, so practice both. Then, turn your, and do that on both sides, right? Let's review real quick. Pop it up, you have that, get in a better position. Strike, hooking motion, either at an angle or coming across, scraping motion putting that hook right through their face, bringing it back, and then a fourth strike up and through, and then you can support it here if you can't get your cane, uh, hand down here, and then jab, or here, and step in. Practice both ways. Practice here, one, change it, two. Now you have a flow drill with one, two, three, four, five, coming in the other way or however you want to do it. And then go to hook facing behind you, get in a better position so now you have a longer reach. You have more distance between you and the knife. And go through angle strike, angle one, angle two. Turn your palm up, three, palm up, four. Horizontal strike and coming back and then vertical down. And then that bayonet attack, switch feet and go to a rifle butt attack. Yeah. They're all the same. There's, it's like, um, this is a universal truth of my belief. There's no, there's no new thought in the universe. The, the, the thoughts have been there. Everybody's thought them. But it's when somebody starts taking action on it that it becomes their own thing. And it seems like somebody made something up. They didn't really, but they made it their own. And that's just as important, if not more important. There's no new idea in the universe. It's just what action or what idea are you going to take action on? So from here, step in, strike two three, four, five, six, seven, step in, switch feet, and then go to the side, break a rib, break the rib here, add a blocking motion, up, punch is coming in, lift, 
their arm from here. Good idea. Or wrap a pole with a bunch of old carpet. Like if you're in an area where people throw stuff out all the time, look around. You're gonna find plenty of things. Just watch out for the bed bugs. Don't, don't pick up a cushion full of bed bugs and take it to your house. But find something. You can, there's a lot of things that can be wrapped. You know, thick newspapers or uh, those uh, throwaway flyers and stuff. Just wrap it with tape. And, and you'll have to replace it because it'll get beat up. But find something. And if you can't, still practice in the air. This is still going to be extremely powerful in a hard strike if you allow yourself to go through the motions even without hitting anything. You're still going to build that power and you're going to put the pressure on your hand like you need to to get a good feel for it. So let's review real quick. On the other side, step in or step back, but put the cane between you and the threat and then think, are you going to add this block? That's where we were. The punch is coming in, the knife is coming in. You push the hand up, quickly exposing their ribs. Break them. Two, for self-defense. Three, four, horizontal, horizontal, vertical, bayonet, rifle butt. Break the ribs in the side, break the ribs. And then the guys run up behind you, let go one hand, smash them back there. Go to the other side, smash behind you. But imagine, that's flow training. Practice your combinations and flow. Imagine if it's multiple attackers. Picture someone with a knife. Picture somebody with a baseball bat or a skateboard or a chunk of concrete or frozen water bottle. Picture it in your head and then practice. Now is the time to prepare so you don't have to panic or perish. Prepare or panic. That just means if you've prepared a lot, when the situation comes, your heart race is just the same. You start to breathe a little bit deeper because you practiced it. And your mind switches from fear to preparation. I'm, I'm ready to defend myself. Indignation. You're not going to take that from me. Yeah, that's good. They work in so many ways, right? Prepare or perish. You have some options. They have a knife. You have nothing in your hand. You don't know how to take away a knife anyway. Um, you have very few options. 78 stabbing uh, injuries later. You expire in the hospital or you're prepared. Prepare or perish. That's, that's all I'm saying. God forbid it ever happens. It'll never happen to you. You'll live a safe, long, healthy, happy life. No one will ever uh, threaten to take away the things that you care about, your dignity, your life, your family, your uh, means to, to provide, put food on the table for your family. No one will ever do that. But if they do, I want you to be prepared. I don't want you to perish. I want you to prepare now and now before the second shutdown comes some of you are already in it you're in europe they already shut you down again you're in chicago they shut you down you're in new york you're in san francisco who knows what happens january 21st right and then more businesses are gone and there's more fear and anxiety and people who are desperate because they're out of work because all of the small businesses across america all the restaurants are done gone and then they just or you can say well you know we're they're giving a stimulus who do you think is going to pay for that <laughs> What's going to happen? Anyway, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be doom and gloom because I'm not. It's all about you have a choice. How do you prepare? How do you prepare? How do you take action so you don't have to stress? You don't have to worry. Take action. You'll feel stronger. You'll get healthier. You'll have some options if you ever need it. And if you don't need it, that's great. We, we all would love that. Most of the things you worry about will never happen anyway. Anyway, I didn't see that one. You'll have to ask me later. Please take a look at the, com uh, the, the link below if you need a cane. And then leave me comments. Leave me your questions. Go to Pasquinelli.com. Pasquinelli, P-A-S-Q-U-I-N-I-L-L-I dot C-O-M. Go there. And then in the contact box, send me a message. Get on the mailing list. Let's communicate because this is how I learn everything. And we all learn together. This is a global community. It's a virtual dojo. It's a virtual dojo. It's global. It's worldwide. We're all in this together. You've heard that uh, tagline enough. Let's make it meaningful. Let's make it uh, the, the global martial arts community so that it really means something because we're all working to be better and stronger and to prepare so we don't have to perish or prepare so that there's no panic. I'll see you guys in a little bit.